Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design. And in today's video in Plasticity, we're gonna talk about blind threads in solid models. So this is a tricky topic. I've gotten a couple comments and questions about threads. We've done a video where we talked about creating threads for 3D printing and I used a circular profile. I find this to be the best option in most cases. It's, it's easy to model, it's easy to do, easy to offset geometry to deal with tolerances. But in this video, we're gonna talk more about machined threads. We're gonna talk about the process of modeling them and how to deal with it in blind holes. Now, blind hole is just a hole that doesn't go all the way through a part. I would strongly suggest not to do this. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of a weird disclaimer here, but the process is, is lengthy. This video is probably gonna be 15 to 20 minutes long. But in some cases, you, you may just have to model this. So if you really are trying to figure out how to model a true thread, then I'll help you out in this video. But again, like I said, the reality of it is there are, are quicker ways to do threads in plasticity. There are other programs that have thread tools automatically. You can create threads in and then bring solid models into plasticity if you want. So again, the process is take it or leave it for what it is, but it's, it's not straightforward and there are plenty of other ways to do this. But to get started, we're gonna delete the cube we're gonna do a forward slash, and we're gonna to go to our preferences just to make sure that we're in the metric unit system. Uh, quick note, every time we start a video, I'm using a default install with really no customization. Um, even though I have recently done a video on radial menus and things like that, I tend to avoid any customization in these videos because I know it makes it hard to follow along. But if you're tired of deleting that cube every time, you can get rid of it, you can zoom in, and then you can save a new startup scene so that way you don't have to delete it every time. Uh, I don't mind doing it, but I know that I get that comment and Blender is the same way. Uh, every time you open Blender, you have a cube there and you can just redo the startup scene by doing a, a new save as if you want. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start and we're gonna create a 50 millimeter cylinder. So tab and hit 50, and then we're gonna extrude this up a distance of 15 millimeters. I'm gonna get rid of the circle, select and delete. And what we wanna do is we wanna make a hole in the center that's gonna represent the size of a drilled hole. So when we're talking about actual machined threads, there are a lot of different parameters that we have to deal with. If you're talking about your, um, you know, maybe using a, a standard hand tap to cut a thread in a part, there's going to be a, ch a chart that will let you know you need to drill this size. In our case, we're gonna do a metric 36 millimeter thread. And that means that the hole that would get uh, cut in this would be 32 millimeters in diameter. Now, in reality, we're gonna actually increase that a little bit, but we'll do that later. So we're gonna take that 32 millimeter hole, we're gonna pull it down distance of 10 millimeters, so it's blind. And then we wanna use the difference option, W on the keyboard and click our object, then right click to accept. Don't need the circle anymore, just really need to have the solid body. All right, so again, we're using an M36, a metric 36 millimeter thread. And this means that we've drilled a hole, or it's got a flat bottom on it, but essentially we've drilled a hole 32 millimeters in diameter. If we were going to be doing a fine pitch thread, we would drill it at 33 millimeters. And this is because the depth or the size of the triangle for the threads varies. So you have to look at a tap chart if you're trying to create a true machined thread. Now for this case, if you just search isometric thread profile, you probably come up with a dozen results. I'm gonna give you all of the different um, bits of information throughout, so you don't need to do that now, but if you wanna see it or figure it out, you can. The next thing that I like to do is duplicate this solid body. I'm gonna hit Shift and D and then just right click and I'm gonna hide the original. The main reason that I do that and it's specifically for videos like this is I'm gonna to go to the top view which is seven on the keyboard and I'm gonna create a line on the X axis and then we're gonna cut through this. So C on the keyboard, right click and then we're gonna delete this front piece and delete the line. And again, the main reason I do this is for the video and visualization so we can see inside of the part. Next, I'm gonna go and select this face and hit spacebar. This is gonna create a temporary construction plane, which allows me to know that I'm modeling everything directly on the center of this part. The next thing that we need to think about when we're talking about a machined thread or, or really any thread is going to be where the thread starts and where the thread ends. Now, for something like a machined thread, I'm pretty specific about how I do this. 
In this case, I'm going to start from the top center and I'm going to come up and hit tab a distance of four millimeters and hit enter. The reason I picked four millimeters is because for an M36 thread, a coarse thread, the pitch or the distance between triangles is four millimeters. So this means if my thread ends right here, I want my helix to go up an entire another turn of that so that it completely exits the solid body. The bottom needs to go down 10 millimeters to get to the bottom of my hole. And then I need to go down another four to repeat this process. So now that I've got that point selected, we're gonna use move, which is G on the keyboard. You can hit Z and then we can hit negative 14 millimeters and hit enter. If you're not sure if you think you maybe messed this up, you can always use the measure tool, which is control and equals. And we can go from this top point to the bottom point and just double check to make sure that we're actually at 18 millimeters. I don't need to keep this in here, but that's a good way to just double check yourself. You can also select the line. And if you look in the bottom right hand corner, you'll get information about whatever you have selected. So the length of my line is 18 millimeters and it gives you other units there like inches. And then it tells you it's a line and it tells you where it's located and so on. Uh, so a couple ways that we can do that. The selection and taking a look in the bottom right hand corner is certainly quicker for just something like a line. But if we wanted to get a distance between two points, then we would likely need to use the measure tool. So now this is going to be the starting point for my thread and the ending point. So I'm going to get off my temporary construction plane. I'm going to use a spiral starting at that end point, coming to this top end point, and I'm just going to drag it out. We need to think, think about or figure out the number of turns as well as the radius. So we know the radius is 32 millimeters divided by two. The number of turns is going to be the total distance of our line, which is 18 millimeters, divided by four, which is the pitch or the distance between each thread. So that's going to give me a total of four and a half turns. The other thing we need to consider is where that starting point is. So if we go to the top, it's kind of at a weird position and really it needs to be here. So the way that we deal with that is we're going to restart this process. I'm going to hit escape is I'm going to start the spiral here and here. And instead of just picking something out in space, actually snap to geometry. So for example, snap to this edge and it's going to put it at a defined location. So now I know four and a half, 16, and I can say, okay. And while it's still selected, I can rotate it, R, we're gonna go about the Z axis and 90 degrees. And what this does is it's gonna put that starting point, it's now gonna be on that plane. So just creating the spiral by selecting points out in space isn't really gonna help. Having this reference corner here does help us because now we know the exact location of where that end point is. So we can go back to a front view with one on the numpad, or we can double click XZ, or we can create another temporary construction plane. Any of those options is gonna work just fine. They're all in the same location here. But we actually don't even need to see the solid anymore because we know the starting point for our thread. We know our center or central axis of revolution. And we know all the sizes based on the ISO thread parameters. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a line from this point and we're gonna go up a distance of four millimeters. Now, because we've defined our spiral our helix here that should equate to this point here and it says 3.994 there's probably a little bit of a variance there i strongly suggest you use uh, actual numbers so tab and hit four millimeters just to be a hundred percent sure your numbers are right next i'm going to find the midpoint and i'm going to come out to the right now this value is going to be the pitch times 0.866 this is um how this value works for the isometric thread. So four times 0.866. Uh, we can also manually enter that value. Again, you can look down here. It says it's 3.46 millimeters. That's the correct value, but you could also do it. You can calculate it and then manually enter the value if you want. Now, all we need to do is finish off the triangle and we've got our thread profile. There's a couple of other things that we wanna do here, but that's, that's the basic shape that we have for a metric 36 millimeter ISO profile thread with a four millimeter pitch. The next thing we wanna do is select both of these and join them together. This can be done with J on the keyboard or you can select it down here. Then we wanna take this end point 
we're going to use B on the keyboard, or you can select fillet, edge, curve, vertex down here. And we want to create a chamfer on the end. This chamfer is going to be defined by a specific number once again. Uh, so when we're looking at the thread profiles, this value is going to be the, uh, the overall depth of the thread. I'm going to have to use a minus here and I'll try to use some brackets. 3.464. And it's going to be divided by six. So when we're thinking about these numbers, we have to remember that this is going to be the root of the, of the thread. Uh, basically, this is the part that's cut away. And what you're going to find is that in general, and I'm going to undo this here just to show it. But in general, this, uh, the depth of the thread is not quite as deep as the the peak uh, so basically we're going to cut more off the peak of a, a external thread and we're going to leave more at the root of one of these cut away threads you could actually leave it as a point if you want if we're 3d printing it it's not really going to matter but if you were to machine these uh, this is actually a pretty important part of it because it has to deal with the class and the fit of the thread so for our purposes it doesn't really matter i'm just going to leave it at 0.5 but just so you understand where that comes from Next, I want to go back and hide the spiral because I need to take away these corners here. I, I just need to hit B on the keyboard and I want to add a small chamfer here. I'm going to make it minus 0.1. The reason that we had to do that is because if we were to sweep this profile without cutting away that corner, the actual end point, the intersection of those triangles is going to touch the next triangle in that sweep. And this is the problem that all CAD systems have simply based on the fact that those points are overlapping. It won't let you do it. If it's a solid, if it's a cutaway, it just doesn't like it. So in the end, what you would need to do is have more of that overlapping or intersecting in some CAD systems, or you need to cut it away like we did here. Uh, so everything looks pretty good there. I'm gonna right click and accept. I'm gonna hide all of these curves and lines, and I'm actually gonna hide the sweep, and I'm gonna bring back my original uncut solid. Now, the main reason for this is because if we were to just cut the thread away from this 32 millimeter diameter, it wouldn't cut away enough. Generally, what happens with cutting threads is the whole size is certainly important. It's critical, especially if you're drilling and tapping or you're cutting threads with a rigid tool, you wanna to make sure that you follow that. If you are doing a 3D printed version of that, then you likely want these diameters to be a bit bigger uh, because you don't want the parts binding up. So generally you need to look at what your, you know, what your specific printer will do. Generally that's in the realm of 0.2 to 0.4 millimeters will get you a, a fairly tight fitting thread. If you go bigger than that, they're gonna be fairly sloppy. But generally what I like to do is 0.2 to 0.4. Then I can select this and I can hit um, I can hit equals. Equals is going to be another dimension tool that we have access to. So instead of using offset when it was at 32 millimeters, what I can do is I can select the face and hit the equal key. And I can say, I want this to be 32.6 millimeters or 32.8 or whatever. That way we don't have to just guess at it because we're dealing with the radius value and the diameter value. All right, let's go ahead and get off the construction plane. Let's bring back our spiral and we're gonna use the cut tool. So the first thing we wanna do is select our thread and we're gonna use uh, C on the keyboard, which is cut. And then the base or the cutter is gonna be the bottom of our hole here. And we're gonna right click to accept and then delete that remnant piece. The main reason that we do that is because if we don't cut away the base where it, where it hits there, what's gonna end up happening is the thread's gonna keep cutting down deeper than the bottom of that hole. We can't have that. The next thing that we wanna do is put a slight chamfer on this edge. Uh, it doesn't need to be huge. I'm gonna do one millimeter. It's probably bigger than it needs to be. But that way, the leading edge of the hole isn't a sharp, uh, sharp corner. And this is true if you're doing a drill and tap operation, you tend to do a little bit of a deeper on that edge anyways. All right, so now we can select the cylinder, hit Q, which is our Boolean tool, and then remove the thread. And there we go. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna select this, hit M on the keyboard for material and I'm gonna drop the opacity. So that way we can kind of see into it. 
So the thread comes down and where it meets the base or the bottom of that hole, you can see that it just kind of, um, it kind of ends. Now in reality, you're not gonna have a square bottom hole like this and a thread that's able to be cut like that. Generally, the tap that you use or the method that you use to cut these threads is going to taper, the, the leading edge of it will taper, and you'll also have to have a drill point at, in the bottom of the hole, just a little bit of extra clearance. Because if you run a tap down into a blind hole all the way to the bottom, then you're gonna break it. It's something it has to give, and generally it's the tap that does, and it'll be stuck in the hole. So this is okay for 3D printing, but it's not okay if you're trying to machine. Generally, you don't even do the modeled threads. You just call out the hole size. In this case, we would say 32 millimeters, M36 by 4.0 tap. And then you would um, list the depth that the thread goes down. So in this case, it's 10 millimeters, which we couldn't do simply based on the fact that it would bottom out here. So we would have to go down something like eight millimeters. But hopefully that helps understand the process of creating a thread in a blind hole and also more about how a, a true ma machined, tapped, mechanical style thread would work. You can 3D print these threads. They do work, but just keep in mind that even with other CAD tools that can generate these modeled threads, you can't really print them as is. You still need to deal with tolerances that you have on the 3D printing side. And again, 0.2 millimeters is going to be a fairly tight fit for most printers, 0.4 I found with, uh, you know, the last three or four printers I've tried this on has worked fine. Some printers may need a little bit bigger depending on, uh, again, the way that the printer is set up and how accurate it is and the size of the nozzle and so on. But if you have any questions on that, let me know. And if you are looking to purchase Plasticity, remember that we are an affiliate channel. So if you want to save 10% and support the channel, you can use the code LEAD10 at checkout. and That'll save you 10% and also help out the channel. So once again, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.